Yeah. So, welcome to the one of the Greenbelt virtual art tours. Uh, I'm Mary Golick. I'm one of the resident artists here at Greenbelt. And today I'm going to give you a little tour of my studio and show you some of the things that I do. I have my studio mate here, Gina Den, and she's going to hold the camera, uh, the phone for me while I go ahead and talk and do my thing. So um, I'm just going to wait for a couple more minutes to see if anybody is going to get on live. Uh, this will be posted as a video, however, on my Facebook page, Mary Golic Art Tiles. Uh, so you can, if you miss this, you can go and see it at another time. And I think it'll also be on Instagram after this too. Um, so I'll, so I see that Kathy Carlson has joined and I'm gonna flip this around and hand the, the phone to my studio assistant. I mean, not my studio, my <laughs> studio mate. <laughs> so let's go down here a little bit as we come. This is as you enter my studio. I have a whole display wall of my, some of my art panels. So a panel is just multiple tiles that are um, put on a substrate with cement and grout. And so these are um, a Scraffito series that I did that focused on tessellation. And tessellation is that this is one tile, the second tile, third tile, fourth tile, and when they all, they're all the exact same design, but when they come together, they make a larger design. And that's a real key thing in tile making. So this was sort of a series in tessellation. Um, this was, an, I do a lot of techniques because I teach surface decoration and glazing here at Greenbelt. So I'm always fooling around with different ways to decorate the surface of clay. This is carved. And believe it or not, this is just one glaze. Um, and so where the glaze went over a high edge, it went white. And where it was deeper, it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a deep red. Um, this is another technique that I do called scraffito. The clay is white, so all the white that you're seeing is the clay body. And the black is a colorant that I put over the whole clay and then scratch away the black to make this design. That's called scraffito. Uh, this is a, a panel that I did for a show that we had here at Greenbelt called What Remains. And this was my interpretation of that theme. And oddly enough, when these pieces were in the kiln firing was the very time that we had that big earthquake in Maryland. Do you remember that? That was so weird. People told me don't put earthquake tiles in the kiln ever again. <laughs> um, this is one of my newer pieces that just got finished last year. And if you, Gina can zoom in on it a little bit. These are all three dimensional uh, that pieces that are coming off and getting some height on the panel. I wanted to, uh, I've been studying ways to get height with um, clay and these uh, flowers that I knew that if I just stuck them on the clay tile, I would probably cause some warping or cracking. So I actually cut holes in the tile and made the flowers separate with a little plug and stuck it in the hole uh, when I was cementing it on. That was kind of a neat experiment. This is another relief uh, panel. Uh, with the heron and I just wanted to take a moment to show you this was I always do what's called a cartoon or a sketch of what I think the panel should look like and I do it to scale so and when I say scale I mean wet clay because wet clay shrinks and it dry as it dries and fires in the kiln it will shrink so to get this size of a panel this is actually see how it's larger so I had to accommodate and calculate the shrinkage that would go in this. And uh, once I have this sketch, I will trace the main parts of the design on 
clear vinyl. And I use this vinyl on top of the wet clay to sort of trace in my guidelines and my shapes of my tiles. That way, uh, this is permanent, so if I should drop a tile later and break it in the process, I can always go back to this and make another one, and it will shrink down to the right size. So there's a lot of steps involved in making tiles. So I wanted to just show you a little bit um, more of the pieces that I've got going here. This was done with a combination of underglazes and glazes and carving um, and printing, printing of underglazes on top of the clay. This panel here is a Raku panel. These tiles were all Raku fired. And it's amazing that they all came out and didn't crack. Um, and then I mounted them on a black background. So the tiles you can see are not actually mounted with glue. They're held with these little screws. I was trying to keep the weight down and also not put any extra stress on these tiles because in the Raku process it's very stressful on the tile and you can end up cracking it. This is another new piece that I have. It's called Hunting Bugs and if you look carefully you can see the bugs that the birds are going after. I'm mostly motivated by uh, sailing, nature, complex patterns, architecture. Those are the kinds of things that are always brewing in my head. Over here in my studio are all my individual tiles, or a lot of my individual tiles. Um, and these are just single tiles that have a hanger on the back. They're meant to be put um, on a wall, you know, to be hung. So this is one of the kinds of hangers. I've, I've since got a newer kind of hanger. Um, and this is some of my, this is a, one of my newer little pieces that I really like. It's done with uh, printing and sgraffito and all kinds of different techniques. Um, so I'll let Gina go in here and zoom in on some of these uh, tiles along the wall. And you can see a lot of, more of my work on my pa Facebook page, Mary Gallic Art Tiles. There are a lot of photos of my work there. So I do a lot of different things. I do relief, I do carving, I do sgraffito, um, I do different techniques with underglazes, with printing, um, and, uh, and wax. I do wax erosion, uh, eroding the wet clay, uh, protecting some of it with wax, and then eroding away the other parts with water before I glaze. Uh, so come on over. This is my whole, oh, just if you can do a picture of this. Um, this is one of my, I have two work areas. This is one work area that I have for my glazing. And I mount, I, I put my, tiles actually on a little Ikea Lazy Susan so that I can keep turning the tile and getting a better angle with my brush rather than having to constantly move the tile. Works really well. And here is my, I'm, I'm kind of known as the queen of glazes. These are, <laughs> these are just some of my many, many, many commercial glazes. You can see from my art tiles and my panels that I use a lot of different colors. And on some tiles, even a small tile, I may have as many as 17 different glazes on there. Um, so it, it takes a lot of glazes to do some of these. Not a lot of any one glaze, but a lot of variety. This is my cart of test tiles. So I'm always testing 
glaze combinations, layering one glaze over another to see what happens. And to give you a, an example, this test tile was two glazes, Crater Lake Blue and Banana Cream, a pale yellow. This is the uh, Banana Cream under the Crater Lake Blue, and this is the Banana Cream on top of the Crater Lake Blue. And you can see there's a major difference just by layering the two glazes a different way. So I do a lot of testing to, to come up with different combinations that will be interesting. Moving along, this is my major work area. This is where I do a lot of my work. And I've got a drying area and a place where I can store my panels that are in process. Mary, do you always use little loafers clay or what clay? I mostly use a white clay. For the last few years, I've been using little loafers. Um, it's smooth, it's a smooth clay. It doesn't have any um, grog or, or sand or rough spots in it. So that when I carve, I get a nice smooth surface. Um, but I also use other white clays uh, and it's amazing how even though they're both white clays, they take the glaze very differently. Glaze reacts very differently on them. So I usually try to stick with one clay so that I can do a lot of tests and get the most uh, bang for my buck with glaze. But I do use some red clay. I like red rock because it has magnesium specks in it. I like that. And I use a low fire earthenware clay for some of my tiles also. I'm starting to experiment with that. So I wanted to just show you a couple of things that I'm working on now. This is a piece that, a five tile small panel that I'm working on. And this is, it has just been bisked, which means that the wet clay was fired to become hard. And it has what's called underglaze on it. And you can see that the color is kind of chalky and flat. There's no sheen on it. The next step for this will be for me to put a clear glaze over this, which will make the colors change. will make them actually darker. They'll put a sheen. So just to give you a taste of what it might begin to look like, I'll wet the clay. And you can see that it does get darker and change color. That gives me a hint as to what it's gonna be like with clear glaze on it. So that will be my next step with this piece. After that, I'll mount it on a substrate with cement and then I'll put grout around it. So there's a lot of steps involved in making a panel. This panel over here is one that I made these tiles several years ago for another project that I ended up scrapping. And so I wanted to figure out what else I could do. So recently I've done a cartoon of these three birds and I'm gonna call it discussion. Mm. And they will fit inside of this frame. Notice these tiles are too big for the area right now. And that's because I've calculated how much the clay has to shrink to be able to go into these little squares. So I'll make them big like this and once I'm finished firing everything, then it will fit into this space. And I think I'm gonna use a technique of scraffito. So there will be high contrast black and white carving to make these birds. I'm almost running out of time here, but I wanted to show you another technique that I do. This tile has a lot of texture on it and it's white clay that has been bisque fired so it's ready for glaze. So what I'm going to do is just paint a blackish gray glaze called burnished steel on it. And burnished steel is a very reactive glaze. So when you put other colors over it, it does some very interesting things. So you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, she's ruining the tile. She's just putting black globs all over it. But 
what I'm going to do, once it dries a little bit, is I'm going to take a sponge and wipe off. It's called wiping back. And I'm going to wipe. I'm going to do this before it's actually all dry because I don't have time. But I would wait for it to dry all over, and then I'm going to wipe it. And the glaze is going to come off. And notice that the glaze doesn't really stain the white clay that much, but it just shows me the texture. So I am going to then, when this is all dry again, put another glaze on top of that and the two glazes will combine and make the texture pop out. So that's just a quick and dirty idea of some of the things I'm doing in here all the time. And once this pandemic is over, you're always welcome to stop by and visit. See me on Mary Golic Art Tiles on Facebook.